All right, so my render's done. Now, the way you want to save it is you press and hold, click Save All. So we're going to name this environment.exr. I always say the XRs, it's 32-bit, high dynamic range file, and then you convert it to 8-bit or 16-bit, whatever you feel comfortable doing. So it's going to take a second to save. It's 4,500 pixels wide by 3,000 tall. So here we go. So my beauty pass saved. I'm going to open it up in Photoshop. The glare is saving as we speak, and I think they're pretty much done. Perfect. All right, so I'm going to click Save, exit this out. I don't need it. And we may end up having to re-render it without the shadow, but we'll see. All right, so don't really need to do much. Well, what I'll do is just in case, I'll duplicate it, add a really overexposed layer just in case. Click on Image Mode, 8-bit. All right, there we go. So we have that. Then we open up the Bloom and Glare. Like so, even though this shouldn't have it, but I guess it does, whatever. So now we have all of our glare effects. Then I'll do the normals just in case if we want to adjust some uh, tones in the background. All right, now I'm going to go into my working file, and then I'm going to open up the, uh, the GTR file. So GTR blank is the one that I want to open up. All right, so what I'm going to do... Let's change this to 4,500 by 3,000. Perfect. I'm just going to select these two layers, copy them, and I'm just going to paste them. And now, as you can see, because we did everything matching up all the perspective stuff, this is falling into place beautifully. And our lighting is kind of similar with the strobe. So again, things are matching up. They're looking pretty realistic, just, just how we have it. Now what we'll probably want to do is adjust a few things. So okay, we have our shadow pass. Let's see if we want to use. So okay, as you can see, the uh, the photography shadow is a little different than the CGI one, which is fine. So what we'll do is brush it in and out. So what I don't want is I don't want much back here. Whoops, that hardened it. So I'm just gonna take that zero. Like so then I'm gonna just gently brush this off. What I am going to do is go in and feather off the edges. All right. It's at 10%, that's why. So, like so. Because I don't want that white showing up. There we go. Again, do the same thing here. Kind of help sell that. Like so. All right, then what we'll do is kind of go and clone stamp these things out. So just to clean this up some. Like so. And then what I will end up having to do is actually go and reopen that file. So I'll just start opening 3D Max in the background. And what we want to do is render out an extra text file. And I'll show you what that means in a second. And that's how we're going to incorporate this crevice into our ground texture that we shot. All right, so the problem is, too, is we have different tones of temperature of white balance. So what we'll do as well is underneath this, we'll add a little bit of blue. Actually, first things first is tone down that red like that. Tone down that green a bit. Invert it. And then we'll go in and just brush this in just so we could help blend the uh, photography and CGI a little better. So, like so, and I like the warmth that we had here, so I'm just still gonna leave that as is. Now, what I am going to do is group these two things, because I did the clone stamp. Now, I wanna go in and still tone this, whoops, then click it on my other monitor by accident. Kinda take that down, just 10%, nothing too crazy. 
but enough to just kind of help blend it in. All right, so I'm going to bring it back some. The, uh, the shadow from the CGI is just, if you were to uh, render it, don't render it with the shadow. Just use the photography shadow. That one's just not working out because it's just not the same. If you had the 3D model, it would be, but it's not. So whatever. All right, so we're going to open up our environment. All right, and what we're going to do is quickly create an extra text map. And to do this, I'm just going to delete some of these things. I'm going to delete the light sources, the, uh, the little LED lights. Don't need them, not for this purpose. So just delete all this. All right, delete that. Delete that. Delete that. Delete the car or the dummy of a car. All right, so what we'll do is a uh, Corona light material. So do 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 materials Corona light material. We're gonna select everything, assign it, and then for the the map, what we want is a Corona AO. Now turn it on to preview, and we'll see what we have. And I hope it's gonna start working. Um, unless it's not liking it. So let's do this. Well, it should. All right, so Corona Legacy Material. Let's see what's happening here. This is annoying. We'll add it as an extra text for the post side. Okay, this whole thing's like freezing up. So I'll have to restart 3D Max. This is just weird. It's not liking it. So let me pause the video and restart the software. All right, so I have it reopened. For whatever reason, it does not like assigning that Corona AO to the light material. It just keeps freezing. And V-Ray works perfectly fine. This is just another little hiccup with Corona. Again, this is why I have a preference on render engines when it comes to my commercial work. So anyhow, what I'm going to do is just try to turn on RT with everything visible. I'm going to try to assign it to default because I'm not even going to render it the way uh, with the light material. I'm just using it as a preview mode. However, again, it's not even working as a preview mode successfully. So it is what it is. So I'm assigning gray to everything. And for the diffuse, that's where I'm going to put in the uh, Corona AO. And what this is going to do, so we're going to swap these two. It's going to create a ambient occlusion map. As you can see, it fills only the crevices of the detailed areas. So this range is kind of nice. So what I'll do is I'll click stop. And now we're going to create two render elements. Or just one. And it's going to be called Corona Extra Text, if I remember correctly, or CT, CT, CT map. And drag and drop that one in there as an instance. There we go. And now what we are going to do is turn off all these light sources, or delete them, the way we originally were doing it, until it froze. Like so. Delete that one, and then go in and delete this one. Now, if we turn on our T, perfect, it's black. All right, so now what we're going to do is press F9 to start the rendering process. And we should start seeing this uh, render element come out. So it's going to render quickly because it's all rendering black, which is wonderful. And if you go to the CT map, it's this black and white map. And what this is, is essentially this is our crevice that we're going to use as a multiply. And I think I have to invert the colors. So I could either do it in Photoshop or I could do it in here. I'll just at this point just do it in Photoshop to kind of work with what we already have. So I'm just going to give this a couple more seconds to bake in since we only really need this little area. All right, I'm going to hit stop. I have that. 
do its thing. So while that's denoising, I'm going to find the directory of where I'm going to save it. So there we go. It's almost done. And as soon as this is ready, we'll just save it, and you'll see how we're going to use this map. All right, there we go. So AO.exr. All right. The map is saved. We're going to copy this one, and we will paste it above the, uh, the shadow. And we will do Control-I to invert it and use this as a multiply. And now all we have to do is go in and brush it right in here. And this is going to give us the ability to, as you can see, seamlessly blend our shadow from the photography into the, the crevice detail that we have in the CGI model. So now you don't have to fake depth or anything like that. So there we go. That's the, uh, that's the quick way of faking the two. And so now the last thing is just kind of adjusting your tones and getting things to match the background. So I'm just going to add a little curves to this. Going to darken the car a bit. Like so. So I don't know if these would reflect in the windshield. Maybe a little bit. Typically what you'd want to do at that point is kind of model the uh, the glass shape of the car and then uh, render a, uh, a black reflection pass, which I'll kind of, you know, whatever. We'll knock it out real quick, see how it works. All right, so let's just hide everything except for the car. And since this is my little dummy area, I'm just going to quickly model the uh, the windshield parts. So I'm going to throw on 2D zoom. At this point, I don't need this since we're matching the uh, specs in a way, not exactly the way. So, all right. Now we'll just go something like this, just scale it in. Cut it down the middle. Wood screws typically bow out a little bit flare up like that. Um, since centered it's half, I'll just work with half of it. Throw a symmetry modifier on top so that way it just mirrors it perfectly. Throw a turbo smooth on top. There we go. Now I'm just going to add a little bit more roll, a little more detail, a little more shape, just so it it's going to help us match it a little better, like so. Again, flaring that out. And now on this car, this area is kind of bowing out and it's kind of flat. So we'll just do it like this. And again, this is a very, very sloppy way of doing it. You probably want to do a better job. But for the sake of just finishing up this tutorial, we'll just knock it out quickly. There we go. Just add a little bit more flare. Something like this. Like that. Like that. Cap that. Add something there. And then what we'll do is... Something like this. Like so. And then we probably want to go here. Like that. This should be a four point poly. So we're good there. Connect that. Connect that. We're going to cap that. So as you can see, now we're starting to just lose our shape. So we'll just go in, manually tweak that. Turn on that. Extend this over. Bridge. Bridge. Work these out. Flare both of these segments up like so. 
All right, and now we're going to exit that, unhide everything, hide our dummy car. And if you want, what you could actually do is extend this so that way it kind of goes down to that carbon fiber a little bit, even the though the shapes and stuff are not going to be accurate. So there's that. And I am just going to throw a black reflective material on this. So Corona Legacy material. We're going to make this pitch black. Then what we'll do is give this a reflection property of 1. Like so. Press F10. And then if you go to the scene, you could do render selected, viewport selection. And now we're going to assign that material to this. Just press F9. And this should render my uh, little reference windshield area. And let's see what this does if we capture some of that overhead light. If we do, great. If we don't, whatever. All right, so as you can see, we are getting some of the lines. Getting some of the lines here, some of that rim light there. So I guess we'll keep it, and we'll see how it is when we brush it in in Photoshop. Hopefully, it matches up enough to help sell it a little better. But again, we just kind of did a very quick, rough model. So I don't know what to expect. All right, I don't want to sit here and wait for a while to render. That's good enough for me. So I'm just going to denoise it real quick. All right, well, that's there. Oh, don't even have to pause it. There we go. So there we go. I'm going to name it Reflection. Save that one. All right, and my reflection looks like it's done. Now I'm just going to copy this, paste it on top of the car, make it a screen blend mode. As you can see, it's falling into place. And what I'll do is select this, select the alpha of our car. And now I'm just going to gently just brush it in. Kind of like that. Right in there. Nothing too crazy, but just enough to kind of help sell the environment effects on the uh, on the car. So there we go. Nothing too wild, but now it just kind of helps blend it in. There wasn't anything happening there. Um, I don't think anything happened on the back side. Oh. Yeah, it did. So, and my wrap is satin, so it's not really going to reflect much, but based on this angle, it might hit a little bit. So there we go. That just kind of helps tie the two in. All right. So now it's like the fun stuff. So I'll go in, I'll add a little bit of smoke to the environment. I'll give it like a blue smoke. There we go. I'll desaturate it some. Change the tone of it. Like that. Now just brush it in like this. Again, this is all subjective. And as a photographer, you already know what you like and don't like. So for the most part, this tutorial after this is kind of useless to you because you just need to learn how to create the uh, CGI environment, kind of composite or uh, not composite, but create the uh, perspective match and all that stuff. Everything else is as a photographer you already have a have your own re preference and vision of how you would like to accomplish it but if anyone wants to just continue watching this tutorial to the end this is just my own little personal opinionated things that I'm doing here so again brush that out I don't want to make this more in the shade in the depth all right now what we'll do is let's see here this wall see what would happen if we just select this color range so we have that and that's the gtr itself here's our background so if we adjust this we could darken that wall some so the car stands out then what we could also do is select this range and then kind of select it going out from here 
how much of a spread we get. Like that. Let's see what would happen if we darken this. There we go. All right, we got our bloom and glare pass turned on like so. There we go. And now just like my other video, my little favorite thing is the exposure X little final, final look and finish. So we'll do this, bump up the contrast, the highlights, the clarity, I'll bump up the saturation. It's a fun looking environment. Add some grain to blend the CGI with the photography. Add a bit of a little glow effect. There we go. And so that, in a nutshell, is taking a 2D photo. Well, not 2D, sorry, stupid. Taking a photo that you shot and incorporating a 3D CGI environment into it with Corona Render and 3 Studio Max.